us begin. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for my mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to the Luma, if we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find our mothers ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the Christelle mother began. Days passed with no sight of, a, of the comet, or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended as far as, the, as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl, above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials, telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavor tea, but... I forgot to bring water. At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter and the girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl could stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh and the girl couldn't help but join in. Alright, maybe just a nibble. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits taste like honey. A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping limo awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get to that car. The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look! Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits escaping in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there is water here, too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. Mm -hmm. 
One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother's retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'll always watch over you like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I cannot see the, the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said the woman to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama. The pair traveled through the starry skies and thought they encountered many other comets. Not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was de disappointed. Now, now, Luma. The rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. That was an accident, I'm sorry. The kitchen will go here and the library will go over there. The girl said busily to herself, we'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she's been bustling about at a fresh pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only thing buried in the ice. There were tools, furniture, unlike any they have ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the complement completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate. It was certainly spacious, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was too large for just the two small residents. That night, cluttering her favorite stuffed bunny to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Oh, I meant clutching, sorry. Not cluttering. I have bad grammar, so sorry. Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot colored planet appeared on the horizon. From the planet, another luma of the same color emerged. Do you to know each other, the girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, my, the apricot Luma peered back. My mama, my mama. My mama, my mama. The two Lumas began to dance around the girls frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh, and that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama, my mama. The sight of all the shouting lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I doing with all these children?
children. The Loomis just stared blankly at she doubted blankly as she doubted over laughing. Double over laughing, sorry. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she will begin moving all the Lomas into the new house. After seeing the 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star, but how strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. Why am I talking so fast? She twisted the knob of the telescope and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very f familiar to her. God, I have bad grammar. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up the hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother would slide down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on that hill on the bright and windy days. And... I want to go home. I want to go home right now. The girl burst into tears and the mama didn't know what to do. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house by the hill. I want to see my mother. The girl was shining now. Her face went into tears. If you hear any slamming, like doors, I'm sorry, my sister's pissed off. But I know she's not there. I know all along that she wasn't out there in the skies because, because. She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. Though usually quiet and cheery, one day, the girl became sad again. Luma drew closer and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama, because she's part of you. That's what, that means she's always close by. It's like me. I love Starbits because they remind me of my mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop the tears. The lonely look flickered across the Loma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea. I will transform into a comet, a soaring comet that will carry you all on this journey. With that, Luma trailed bands of white soared high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom, kablam, the ground shook and a bright light poured out of the crater and the Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet tail. And then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes, but how? She kept asking. Okay, I, I said that word wrong, but who cares? Our destiny as Lumas is to transform into different things, said a red Luma, who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets, we will all become these things. When I grow up, I want to become a star that makes someone special smile, said a green, a green luma. A green star. A blue luma chimed. That luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? 